This program is brought to you by UCKG. Hello and welcome to the Love Talk Show and today we are here in Brexhill on sea, more precisely at Cuden Beach Hotel to record this amazing show today. As you can see, amazing just like the weather. Indeed. <laughs> we are bringing the British, the, 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 the original British weather to you now. With this stunning view. Yes. Uh, but we have decided to come to this place because it is a symbol. Since many uh, wedding ceremonies are held here, it's a symbol of the beginning of dreams. Just like everybody, when they start yeah. a relationship together, they dream of, of being yeah, happy. This is a very popular venue for uh, um, husbands and wives, newlyweds, to come and celebrate their wedding. Here they hold weddings, also wedding receptions. And today, uh, in today's show, we will be discovering why couples fight so much. Why uh, there is so much uh, um, fights and arguments after um, the wedding, after the wedding celebrations. There's a lot of preparation for the wedding day, for the wedding reception, for the honeymoon. However, when it comes to dealing with, you know, daily issues, as far as relationships are concerned, as far as marriages are concerned, it seems like some couples, men and women, do not have a clue, don't know what to do. They're a little bit oblivious to the whole concept of marriage. Today we're going to be interviewing Alex and Lear, which, uh, who will be helping us shed a light on today's topic and help us understand what is the root behind um, the arguments, fights, and sometimes even divorce. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, today England is facing um, you know, a huge number of divorces. Statistics show that uh, divorces are on the rise uh, in this country, and we want to tackle that today through today's story. Yes, we are going to we want to go through what begins as a dream sometimes can turn into a nightmare. How do you That's reverse right. that? Yes. But before we get into that, let's find out a little bit more about this place. Love Talk Today is here in Bexhill on Sea in East Sussex, one of the most southern counties in England. Now, it may not look like it today, but here you can find and enjoy one of the most milder climates in England. And here you can also find miles of picturesque coastline and popular destination beaches like Hastings and Brighton. No wonder you can find here one of the most popular marriage destinations for couples. Now, as you can imagine, this is the perfect getaway from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And what's great about it is that it's only a couple of hours drive from the London city centre and this place is accessible via train. This place is surrounded by charming small town and villages full of character and beauty. Not only that, it has countless local attractions like Arundel Castle, Chichester Cathedral and the high wheeled area of outstanding natural beauty and of course Nyman's Garden which is only just a stone's throw away. If the beautiful scenery isn't enough for you, there is definitely plenty for you to do and see with your loved ones. And how does this place rank when it comes to the Love and Relationships Department? Well, according to the Sussex Government website, parts of Sussex have the highest percentage of married people with 55.3% of all the districts. And this is higher than the county percentage and the percentage for England and Wales as a whole. That's 46.6%, which is awesome, of course. Back to you, Luke and Rafa. Thank you, Jenny. And as you can see, there's lots of things to see and lots of things to do around here. That's right. So we're going to go to a quick break. And after that, we'll be interviewing Alex and Leah. Stay with us. This program is brought to you by UCKG. 
Hello, our YouTube viewers. We are the presenters of the Love Talk Show. I am Rafa. And you know who I am. <laughs> Look. And we are here to um, encourage you to share the, the, this channel um, with uh, your friends, your family members. Invite them to watch our, our shows because, you know, our desire is to help couples and singles do better in their relationships or future relationships. So... Uh, subscribe to this channel, share on your Facebook page, share the link with, with everyone you know so that it can learn intelligent love. Also, leave us our comments and your questions. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back to the Love Talk Show. Today we are recording our show in Bexhill on Sea, more precisely in a hotel called Kuden Beach Hotel. We have this lovely breakfast set up just in front of us, <laughs> and also this lovely couple, Alex and Lear. How are you today? Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Who are you? They're good. They're good. good. They're always miles today, right? Because I believe that your relationship today. Is, is you guys are doing quite well? Is that right? Yeah. How long have you been uh, together? Four years. <laughs> Four years. Yeah. Four years. Uh -huh. And some months. And some months. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and all these years you've been married, or or not? No, we get married uh, one year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, in one year and a half, actually, mm -hmm. March yeah. uh -huh. this year. Mm -hmm. I got it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> And, 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 how, and how, is, how, is, how is marriage, how is this relationship today? Yes, I can say it's amazing, it's a blessing. He, yeah, I, I, I couldn't expect more from mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy with the kind of relationship that's going <laughs> from nowadays. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. could, I can say that, you know, it, I live a an awesome, amazing life. Mm -hmm. You know, I can say that uh, the relationship just adds up. Mm -hmm. And I look forward for the next day and for the moment and for the future. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is just hard to explain. Mm -hmm. So do you guys get along well? <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard that a lot of people that explain that it's really hard to be married with someone that you work together mm -hmm. and we got that point. So you work together? Yeah. All yeah. right. And then people usually say it's hard. Yeah. Some, some couples say it's quite hard. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how about you two? Is that hard? It was in the beginning, but now it's amazing. Just it's great to get in the office. Because people usually say, you know, you spend the whole day together right at mm -hmm. work. Then you go home, see each other again. So it's kind of, you know, yeah. uh, it's too, too much. much yeah. Too much. Is that what happens to you or not? No. no. <laughs> no. Just, I, I think that it's just a compliment to be together all the time. Mm -hmm. It's in the beginning it was kind of a test, mm -hmm. you know. But now I can say that it's just, just great to, you know, like think about her and then just do this movement and see her like. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, that's like, quite that's quite romantic. Yeah. <laughs> Even being my ma my husband, he my best friend. Mm -hmm. So I mean, sometimes I just have to go to the supermarket and buy some stuff. So I'm oh, gonna man, miss yeah. already. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you like to love birds, you know, just dating, so almost yeah. like you're dating right now. Mm -hmm. Which is which is very. Um, new because nowadays you see in the people that come to us in our line of work they don't believe in marriage anymore you know they say marriage kills you if you want to destroy a relationship get married because marriage just brings you problems things that you know mm -hmm. you had a good thing going before and if you get married you're going to mess that up what do you get you're married so what do you have to say about marriage what do you get out of being married what's great about being married <laughs> the, first, first, first. <laughs> the first thing it's you always have a good company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always we have someone to count on when you need help mm -hmm. when you need to 
as things. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the the first thing. Mm -hmm. Then it's the connect to the relationship, uh, the deep in talks. Mm -hmm. It's not just like someone that you cross in the street. Hey, hi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we can trust in yeah. someone else. She's my best friend. Mm -hmm. Like I used to have my best friends, you know, like used to be male, man, mm -hmm. you know, and all that thing, you know, like, but now she's my best friend. So she's the person that I want to talk to. She's the person that I want to open up to. It's just rewarding to speak to her. I feel like uh, better after we have a conversation and if I have a problem because she understands me, she knows who I am. And, uh, but it's interesting because you haven't been together that long. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you've been together for four years, married for a year and a few months. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you are very well connected, understanding each other. Is that what happens there? There is a, a mutual understanding? Yeah. We, we, we wouldn't work and be married at the same time if we knew there was a problem. You know, probably one of us would quit our job. <laughs> you know, before having a problem at home. Mm -hmm. So we just love working together and kind of being married at the same time and have all this, this amazing thing that the relationship brings to us, you know, which is something that we just found out like yeah. uh, this year. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, because usually the things that they are not saying- Not from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, no, this is the thing. The things <laughs> that you're saying, usually I heard when you first met, it's usually not true, but people say, oh, we connect, we click, and he understands me. They don't even know each other. They have that impression. Mm -hmm. And once they are together for a while, they say, oh, no, it's not. So it's, it's, um, it's nice to see that after four years, that's when you say mm -hmm. it, that's how it's supposed yeah, to happen. It seems that there is a growth there, yeah. exactly. right? Because recently Absolutely. I spoke to a couple who have been married for 40 years. And the woman was telling me, um, the wife was telling me, well, um, our relationship is a bit rocky at the moment mm -hmm. and I was asking her why and she said well that's usually the way it goes mm -hmm. so in other words uh, people you know the, the, the tendency for some people is that you know it starts very well but as the years go by it begins to decline mm -hmm. the trust relation uh, the, the, the friendship the love and so so forth to the point where they either divorce separate or just become friends or just two people under the same roof who know each other. Mm -hmm. So here we see uh, uh, that, he, that your relationship is ascending, yeah. right? Yeah. From when you met, from when you were, because you're not in your 20s anymore, yeah. no. right? No. Uh, yeah. Not in your 30s anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for your relationship. Yeah. So there were relationships before, that, prior to this one. another thing. Uh, uh -huh. Usually people don't want to grow old mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I really enjoy growing old. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because I'm in this relationship and uh, I think that growing old is kind of a getting mature mm -hmm. and the, in the same, the same, like everything kind, kind of connects, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you just feel that is enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the relationship is going well, it doesn't really matter doesn't age matter. Yeah. or the, yeah. everything you know. kind of all the important things mm -hmm. are different everything mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. you know it's, it's something that you have to to experience mm -hmm. to understand you two had relationships before yes. in the past yes. right yes. which obviously didn't work that's yeah. why yeah. You need to work today. <laughs> but it's different today it's working today mm -hmm. right yeah it's completely different from based on what you're saying you know especially uh, relating to each other, not just as husband and wife, but friends, people who you, a person who you want to grow old with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a question. <laughs> I'm always curious about relationships because everyone has um, their story, but when it works and it's supposed to work, they have certain things that every story has in common. But let's find out a little bit more about your story. Are you very, um, are you very similar, do you find? Well, what I, can, what I can say, I can, professionally, we are very similar. Mm -hmm. We have the same uh, ambitions, ambitions uh, even knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
both of us are producers. Mm-hmm. We share. Uh, we share. Uh, Exactly. <laughs> share ideas, develop ideas. But, so mm-hmm. in that area, you're very much alike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but, Since the beginning of the but, relationship. But that's a different, because the way that you get the results mm-hmm. that we want, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean action. In action, mm-hmm. I have a kind of behavior. I, I'm more organized, <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I plan it, everything. Mm-hmm. And he got the same results. Not being like this. <laughs> she likes to write everything down, mm-hmm. and I never write anything on my no. head. Just works. You know, remind, reminds me of someone because <laughs> I'm like that, and he's like that. Oh, um, yeah. Because no. I think we men are a bit more pragmatic than than women, right? So more organized. And I think right women they like down. to have more control like they they want to feel like they they have control of something oh yes. yeah you want the, oh, the entirely you want the control <laughs> so alex do you, do you see that similarities in yes, the work I see, but I see. when it comes to the two of you there are differences there yeah i see the synergy you know mm-hmm. just there mm-hmm. all the time and uh, of course uh, sometimes you just have to think about it before saying something sometimes mm-hmm. why what do I mean by saying that is exactly the point that we are growing, but at the same time, once in a while, there's something that comes up that we have to just stop, mm-hmm. think about it before kind of pushing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I stopped insisting mm-hmm. because I know that in, within time, she understands. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to prove any point. She doesn't prove any point anymore. We speak, she speaks, I speak, then we talk about it a little bit later. Both of us understand, and we get to a conclusion. You know, like using intelligence all the you, time. You, in the, you're saying we don't, uh, we don't use emotion anymore uh-huh, to discuss problems, to discuss issues. Mm-hmm. We think about it. Intelligent love. Yes. And there's also that thing of winning in couples. Like you want to win, you want to prove your point. And as long as one or both want to win the argument or want to win whatever, we don't have nobody we wins. Passed it. We passed yeah. But you have once. She had a little bit yeah. more. She it, had, it's a kind yeah. of stage. She had that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. kind of stage. You learn. Yeah. You learn. <laughs> so if you want one, one thing that you're saying before is that uh, you are, you, you, it's it, almost like you are the same but with some differences. Yeah. So would you say, for example, that um, I love the it, it, mean, it means that it's not, even though there are differences, it is because you comprehend each other yes. more, <laughs> understand each other more, we like then the all the differences get dropped. Yeah. Right? It, it, I like the differences. When I think about something and she comes up with a different point of view, I respect that and maybe I change. I'm flexible enough to understand mm-hmm. that she's the, my best friend and she's really worried about me. And so I respect, I think it over, and maybe I change my point of view. I don't use hers, but I evolve to another, another one. So it's a matter of being intelligent all the time mm-hmm. and not emotional, Emotion. mm-hmm. yeah. you know? So as you can see, Alex and Lear, they get along very well, right? So it's a lovely story. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we like to hear this kind of stories, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like that from the beginning. And that's something that we want to explore here today. Right? We're kind of playing your story backwards. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to rewind a little bit more. <laughs> it's because uh, people think that this is what relationship is supposed to be. You get together and it's always like this. Like you were together and immediately you get to this point where you are, you know, you connect and you are happy, you understand each other. Like a but, Hollywood movie, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't understand that. Like a nice that, book. Yes. Nice book. Yeah. Nice book. It takes work. It's not yeah. like that. In the, usually it's like this. In the beginning, it's great. Mm-hmm. But for you to continue great or to come to a point when it's going to be great, it's, there must be a phase there, steps to, to be taken yeah. there. And that's what we want to that's explore right. today. Yes. So we are here in Kuden Beach Hotel in Baxio Sea. By the way, it's not a breakfast. It's a, an afternoon tea. Mm-hmm. The, the, the crew here, especially the producer, was almost strangling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's a, it's a, an afternoon tea. <laughs> So when we come back from the break, we're going to hear from Alex and Leah. Um, what was this relationship like in the beginning? Uh, what, what, what happened before they got to this point? It's a lovely story right now. They are very happy together. But, you know, there are a few things that we would like you to know about 
their relationship so that you can see that it's not always a bed of roses. That's why today's show is about why couples fight so much. Okay, stay with us. We'll be back very shortly. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Do you know what intelligent love is? Uh, but you can find out on our site. It's lovetalkshow.tv. Many people, they struggle in love, in their relationships. They keep losing their hearts, their feelings, and everything always goes to waste. So if you want to learn to love intelligently, that's the place you should visit lovetalkshow.tv. We also have our Facebook page, our Instagram page, Love Talk Show. So visit us. I just agree with everything she said. <laughs> this program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back to the Love Talk Show. And today's show is about why couples fight so much. Yeah. And we just heard the story of a little bit of the story of Alex and Lear. The good part of it. Yeah. Right? And the part where you want to get in your relationship. That's right. So now we're going to hear their story individually. Okay? You're going to hear from Lear and Alex what happened when they first met. And they're going to be also uh, digging a little deeper into their own lives individually, you know, because every, everyone carries some sort of baggage with them. Mm -hmm. And if they don't l learn how to deal with those, they're gonna end up bringing some sort of strain on their relationship. Yeah, it's, it, it's exactly this baggage that might put an end to any relationship. So you're gonna find out how that affected the relationship between Leah and Alex. Yes. And in case you've just joined us, we are in Brexit on sea, more precisely at the Kuden Beach Hotel. It's a very popular venue where couples, you know, come to celebrate their weddings or hold their wedding reception. And it's a very nice place for people who would like to celebrate such um, um, ceremonies. Don't okay. let the weather deceive you. <laughs> the yeah. view is stunning. Yeah, the view is stunning. The weather today is not cooperated, but we keep pushing, okay? <laughs> so let's go back to Alex and Leah right now and hear a little bit more of their story now individually. Let's take a look. So, Leah, from the beginning, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's come from the very early beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little baby, but a few days, my mom adopted me from Portugal and bring me to Brazil. And I grew up with them, but I have my, all my childhood, I have a problem with violence, abuse. Mm -hmm. from domestic parents. from my parents mm -hmm. uh, it was that hard that even the school almost go against her to get the rights to be with me uh, and then I grow up thinking that the people you supposed to love me they also use violence with me mm -hmm. When I get to my teenagers and I start to look for boyfriends, something like that, yeah, I realized the ones supposed to love me, they could be aggressive with me. And I was expecting that. How often was, was the aggression? Was it sporadic? Was it always? Uh, my, in my childhood, for my mom, almost every day. Okay. Very, very tough. Uh, I used to go to the school with marks in my body and I had bones broken at some points. Uh, it was really tough. I don't want to expose because I overcome. Mm -hmm. And my mom today, I can understand what happened to her and I love her so much. Mm -hmm. But I, I get the point that even that I, <laughs> I want to hate her mm -hmm. <laughs> because I couldn't understand why to adopt a child if you're going to do that <laughs> exactly so but did you feel loved even though you were or no you you felt they don't love me I try to find love outside home right 
I, I got reference from my colleagues, uh, basically because I, I, I grew up in a Catholic school. Mm -hmm just for women. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how to deal with boys. Okay. Because <laughs> I basically I grow up with just women. And my mom and my parents, my, always very straight, very straight, traditional. Uh, they are Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> if that means something. Mm -hmm. So when I, I start to think about to go to uni, to uni and think I have to deal with boys. Mm -hmm. And then I can tell you, this is awkward because nowadays the, the, the girls doesn't play with uh, toys uh, anymore. Yeah. But till my 15, I was playing with toys, you know, I have my bear, something like this. And, and I expect more for life because when I realize there are couples, they are having good life, and my parents never agreed with those kind of behavior. Uh, I couldn't kiss. Okay. Uh, you know that kind of uh, teenagers part when they completely 15, mm -hmm. and they have a special ballroom, mm -hmm. something. I used to go, and when I was dancing, and a, a boy was dancing with me, of course, and he kissed me in the You're face. You're not used to that. No, my mom was watching. She go in the straight of the middle of the bowl, mm -hmm. and she punched me. All right. Yeah, can mm -hmm. you realize I has already 15. So was basically, I have a childhood really straight, really, really hard, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the person that cares about me, they supposed to be aggressive. So then, it's like you, you grew up thinking someone will love me, but they'll probably hurt me. It's a normal thing. If they don't hurt me, mm -hmm. that means they don't love me. It's okay. even hard, worse, than, can you see? One doesn't go without the yeah. other. Yeah. So when I start to have a, a, a kind of relationship, the boys, I, I get new, I provoke because I, I, I'm gonna knew they love me if they're gonna be aggressive Violent. with me. Mm -hmm. this, this is really something really deep for me because to overcome this kind of behavior, because they don't want to fight with me, they don't want to go against me, these this boys, but they want to love me, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I try to, oh, that means that you don't want to be, if you don't want to be with me, that's because you have somebody else, and then comes the arguing, the caring. Mm -hmm. So I supposed to provoke them just to see, oh, they care about me. Mm -hmm. And how, uh, how old were you and how did it come about when you got married? I was around 30 years old, my first marriage. Mm -hmm. So then I get mature. I, I, I start to compare the relationship with friends. They have a healthy relationship. And the couples, one was respecting each other's this kind of behaviors. Was your husband violent? No, mm -hmm. no. So when I met, my first husband, he was completely different. He was a kind of person really quiet, sporty, don't have any kind of addictions, anything, and he respect me a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and they treat me like I was a, to a toy, a precious toy, mm -hmm. you know? And I thought, okay, this is going to work. Good. Why not? <laughs> it looks like perfect. Mm -hmm. He had everything, amazing family. They are very kind, lovely. And in the beginning, I start, I still have the old behavior. Some, mm -hmm. Sometimes I start to provoke to see how far he goes. Mm -hmm. And he was always still calm down, you know. So, okay, I didn't love, but I, I, I start to like to be treated that way. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, I can deal with that. I can spend my life with this relationship. Then we get together for 12 years. So you're married for 12 years? Yeah, I get married. Okay. And we stay together for around 12 years. 
And then I realized that I get my best friend. Because the kind of things that you're supposed to have together, like a couple. He wasn't my partner. Mm -hmm. He just have, like I told him, a precious toy. Okay. So I'm, I, I, I turn the, the woman that just go fancy clothes, use fancy clothes to go to parties with him. Like besides. he wanted to show you off? Yes, because I was an actress that time. Mm -hmm. I had my career and I was, I get my popular, mm -hmm. popularity if I'm... Yeah, you're popular. <laughs> I was popular mm -hmm. at that time. And he was like, okay, this is my my wife and then we get together and a few times he traveling a lot and so basically I was just a show off and in the end of the relationship uh, we tried to get kids and I was doing a treatment because I was old enough for my uh, to get naturally and I get depression also okay and that gave the relationship a worse uh, um, viewing, mm -hmm. a, a, a worse point, because he didn't like me the way that I was, because I'm getting fat, because the horm hormones. Hormones, yeah. Um, and also my, my temper oscillates too much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was extremely happy, and another time I was crying, depressive. Uh, I also, I, I had problems to try to kill myself. Uh, he couldn't deal with that. Okay. Uh, he, he preferred to keep his life the way it is, going to the gym, going to work. So one day he came to me and was dinner. He was dinner in the table at home and he thought, I don't love anymore. I want a divorce. I was in the middle of the treatment, so I thought, hey, you're joking. <laughs> you didn't doesn't, make, doesn't make sense at all. So, uh, and then let's try to talk. And he told me, I have nothing to talk to you. And went to bed, get a normal deep sleep. And the other day he just wake up, go to the bathroom, take a, towel, a shower and go to work. As if nothing had happened. 12 years. Just like that, just 12 like years that. was Just over. like that. And then we behave like completely strangers. Completely. He couldn't talk to me. Yo, I don't want to talk. I, I, I. One day, from, from night to, a morning, to, to that night, the morning, I didn't know how he was anymore. Uh, what person he, he is, because even a friend, he doesn't told me, you suppose when we have 12 years that we have, you know what he's doing, where he's going. Uh, oh, now probably he's going to be in the gym. Now he's probably going to... It's a life together. It's a life together. And then... It was like, over. Over, completely. In 60 months, he, I signed a divorce. And two days after that, he get engaged to another girl. So I decide... That's finished and I have to take care of myself. And you did that for how long? How long were you alone? I, it's not that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not that ugly, you know. I, I get my chest, I get my charmies. Mm -hmm. So, but basically I, I tried to, I, I didn't plan to. Mm -hmm. I was trying to take care of myself and then comes, uh, but at least Four months, I was by myself alone, completely. Mm -hmm. I arranged my things, because he sponsored me, my ex-husband. And then I tried to realize that I had to find a job, uh, I had to pay my bills, everything. Get your life back, back. Yeah. Uh, by yourself. Yeah. And then I start to like, I start to like, oh, I supposed to do that before anything else in my life, mm -hmm. to get no, who I am, what I want from me. And then I, I like the way that, oh, okay, I'm gonna t take my breakfast at nine because I want to, not because I need to. Mm -hmm. This kind of things that I, simple decisions. 
And I like that. But this is a tricky mm -hmm. that you put in yourself. Because once you get that, you don't want to change anymore. Because I like this the way it is. It should be this way. It's going to be mine. Um, it's my decision. So nobody else is going to have space to get inside also. And how did Alex come into the picture? We hey, hey, <laughs> really, literally, he sent me, uh, we can know, but not really know, because uh, he was my friend. He was a famous DJ at that time. Okay. <laughs> and I knew him from as a DJ. And one day I was, I was uh, talking with a friend of mine and he came from, from Facebook and said, hey. I say, hey. <laughs> Just come that, and then we start to talk. And a friend of mine, she's a, a, a actress also in Brazil. She was, uh, she was opening, uh, launching her book, and I asked him, hey, "Do you like to enjoy with me, so we can the public place?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we start talking. And that's the way we start. I can know, he talk about himself, we have some in common because I used to be an actress. He was writer and also producer. And then we started and the, comes, the things came. Mm -hmm. In three months, for someone that a feeling that I was nothing at all, nobody gonna like me because I it's supposed to have the re I had the rejection problem. Not anymore, mm -hmm. thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I had that pro problem with rejection since I was born. Mm -hmm. So if you come to the story, and he put me, oh, she's amazing. You can do it. It's you know pushing you to. So wow, he's special. So you thought? Did you think now I have a chance to be happy? Yeah, but. You know, I I got the limit. I I can, but that time I didn't want him in my life that way. Mm -hmm. I want to see how it's going because I was enjoying to be alone. Alone. So I didn't plan it. I didn't plan it. That's something. This is something really interesting because once you look after something every day, every day, every day, we're pushing yourself for something that. I, I have to tell, doesn't mean that moment. I, I, I learned that I have to have faith. But first, to get the things from outside, we have to have the right things inside of you. Did you, when you met, when you started your relationship with Alex, did you have those things? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Alex, let's hear from you now. Who was Alex before? Alex was uh, an eternal teenager, mm -hmm. eternal boy, with his own attitude, rebel, without a cause. Why did you become that rebel? Was there any, any reason for that? I didn't like hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. My father, my mother, my mother, no, my, my father was a little bit, in my point of view. So I didn't want to be like him. I wanted to be authentic. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be free, to do what I want. I wanted to change the world in my own way. I wanted to travel around, to be a gypsy, mm -hmm. an eternal gypsy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think about eternity, just about the moment mm -hmm. that would last forever. So was there, a, was there a way to escape all that? What you saw at home? It didn't, I didn't see like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I was very happy. I was very satisfied with myself. I love to be with myself. I love to be around friends, hundreds of friends. I love to, I love life, always mm -hmm. love life. Mm -hmm. So, I created my own environment. If I didn't like to be with someone, I would change to another one and create a whole new story. So I was the director of my own yeah. life. So everything uh, 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 would, ha I mean, you would be at the center 
and everything else would revolve around you. Yes, and if it wasn't revolving, I would change to a different mm -hmm. location Understand. and create a new environment. Mm -hmm. I would change cities, countries, jobs, and create a whole life around there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the internet at the time, mm -hmm. so I could just create a new character, a new personality, mm -hmm. and test it. But did you ever work? Did you ever feel? Did you ever feel satisfied by doing those things? I was At satisfied. The time, yeah, I was. You satisfied. thought that was the way. Yeah, you was. Especially when you were young. Yes. You don't have a lot of responsibilities. You don't have yeah. until you have a child. Mm -hmm. But when you became, you became a bit more responsible. So you're no when longer I, a teenager. Yeah. Now you're a man. When, especially when it came to relationships. Yeah, I I got my first kid, Joshua. And I was like 21. And uh, I remember today I, I was a producer for the U2 show in Brazil. The first time they came to Brazil, I was the producer, inter interpreter of the whole crew. So uh, I was there in a U2 show dating this girl who was the daughter of the guy who brought U2 to Brazil. So it was pretty intense at the moment, and she got pregnant. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm gonna become a father. And I was an actor at the time. I was working in a soap opera called Malhação. It was the beginning of Malhação back in Brazil. And she said, I'm gonna have a, a baby. What are we gonna do? And then I said, okay, let's have this baby. <laughs> So I really wanted it to work because I really wanted to be a father of this boy. He was born, everything was great, but I couldn't deal with the relationship. I wanted her to accept me and I, I didn't want to accept her. So you wanted to be a father, but you're not, you were not ready to be a father. Is that, is that, is that it? I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Now I see that. Today you see that. Yeah, Back then you thought that. you were yeah, fine. Yeah, I, I thought it was fine. And it was fine for a male perspective of mm -hmm. being a father. My, my son really loved to be with me, but the whole uh, environment we were living, me, her, him, wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. So I had another child with her, Sebastian, who I love so much. And when she, got, she had him, we broke up. Mm -hmm. And I went to different challenges, and a lot happened. A lot, a lot, I mean a lot. Like I moved to a different city, I became a producer, and I abandoned everything I was doing at the time, and I started it over being a producer, started working with, uh, back, back, I, I went back working in television, film, uh, as Leah said. I was writing films and uh, segments for shows. Pretty much what you used to do when you were a teenager. Remember when you said, "Yes." If 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 a situation doesn't suit you, you move. Yes. And you create an odd environment. So yes. that relationship didn't work. Uh -huh. Let me move and start all over again. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, going from one girl to a different one, and always thinking that she was good, at, she wasn't good enough for me. But I had dozens of girls, never just one. I would always- At the same time, you mean? At the same time, same time. never, never. I was never faithful, never loyal. I always cheating and manipulating the situation for me as a director when it creates the, the film. Do you know what I find interesting? Uh, you hated the hypocrisy in your father. Yes. But and who did you become? <laughs> Only with women, because I thought uh -huh. that with men, I mm -hmm. was supposed to be loyal mm -hmm. and but I didn't think about that at the time because I thought it's part of life. So I became like my father. But wh why, is, why is that? Why towards women and not toward men? Do you, you, do you know why or something just that happened? Maybe because I didn't want to have a relationship like my father okay. had. So I was kind of lying, but mm -hmm. I didn't see that as a real lie. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that as a problem until I saw them suffering, one by one by one, hating me, hating me. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. So 
I started to see the film restarting, rebooting. Mm -hmm. So it was intense. I, I liked at the time the intensity. So the years passed and the intensity wasn't that fun anymore. So I really wanted to discover something different, mm -hmm. you know? I really wanted to, I don't know, I didn't know at the time what I wanted, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to be intense in the, the relationships. I didn't want to see the women falling in love for me and then suddenly hating me. But I didn't know how to, to change that, uh -huh. yeah. Because I needed to create the film around me mm -hmm. and I needed to see her falling in love. And at the same time, I needed to destroy everything because I didn't, bec I didn't want to become like mm -hmm. my father. Because it's pretty, it's pretty hard for you to, to, uh, for you to, to find happiness when you're trying, uh, you know, your own things. Everything is about you. Yeah. So you don't want, you didn't want them to feel that way, but you, you didn't see that, or you were not seeing that you had to change. Yeah. So, okay, I want women to view me in, in, from a different, in a different way, but you're not thinking, wait a minute, what about me? What am I doing? What am so I doing? So it was, it was as a, once again, everything revolving around you. You were at the center at the time, right? Yeah. And obviously, it began to cause a little bit of fr frustration. Yes. I didn't understand what kind of frustration was, was being caused at the moment, but I understood that it was not healthy for me because I started using drugs. Mm -hmm. I started drinking. I started, uh, I don't know, because I had, then I had children. So it wasn't, it wasn't good for me to think about them and not being able to be with them. And at the same time, it wasn't good for me to have like those girls saying, I love you, I love you. And I couldn't give it back to them from inside. So me. it added up to the frustration. Yes. So what, what did I do? To keep on living, I started to look for, for, for things yep. that weren't inside of me. Mm -hmm. So it was just it, it, a roller coaster. Uh -huh. Living with me mm -hmm. was like an eternal mm -hmm. roller coaster. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Hello everyone, we are here to invite you to our Love Talk seminars every Thursday at 8 p.m. on the address that you can see here at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also find more details on our website, lovetalkshow.tv. Um, we, you find events throughout the year, they are all free, um, you, where you're gonna learn a lot about relationships, um, you know, singles and couples are invited. Our, our desire is to share with you a little bit of what we've been through and also, you know, help you uh, with prayers, with advice, with counseling, uh, down-to-earth teachings in which we will help you become a better man, a better woman, a better husband, a better wife, and see, you know, better, better results of your uh, investment when it comes to uh, relationships. Okay, every Thursday, 8 p.m., Love Talk Live on this address here that you see at the bottom of your screen. This program is brought to you by UCKG. So we, we see that, you know, the way we begin with their story today is the end result of what every couple wishes to achieve. Happiness, joy, understanding, friendship, good communication, good communication patience. However, however, we can also see with their story that wishing is not everything. Mm. You know, many people wish, you know, to have this or that. Many people, many people wish to be this or that, but wishing doesn't mean much. Mm -hmm. You must act on it. We could see that uh, Alex and Leah had lots of issues, lots of issues. They, they came from uh, broken relationships in the past, 
um, children involved, heartbreak, disappointments, Leah even contemplated suicide. Alex moving about, trying to find happiness, trying to feel complete to no avail. So they, they met each other and thought, okay, it's gonna work now. And it didn't because twice he chickened out, right? <laughs> he left her you know, high and dry. hanging high and dry. Third time, he managed to make it work. But even so, even so, with all the desires to, you know, with all the desire to do well, they, 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 they didn't just make it happen from the beginning. They had to work on themselves. There, there came a time where both of them had to say, okay, let me stop and work on myself. And now you understand why couples fight so much, because they fight so much, because in truth, they are battling with themselves. Mm -hmm. You have a battle inside you. You are fighting with yourself. So, of course, when you have someone close to you all the time, you can't help it. You end up fighting with that person. Especially because when you're in a relationship, when you, when, when you get married, you know, you, you discover who you, you truly are. Mm -hmm. your, your spouse will, will help you reveal who you truly are. For example, in our case, um, I, I truly changed after we got married. Through all these 15 years, we've been together for 17, married for 15, I've improved, you have improved, because we, we became a mirror to each other, mm -hmm. right? A, a marriage can either bring the best out of a person or the worst. So now they, they, they had to make adjustments because things were getting out of hand. For example, right now we are in a gazebo. This gazebo here at the, at the uh, Cousin Beach Hotel is where they celebrate weddings. People come here to celebrate the wedding. They hold their weddings here. Here's where dreams begin, relationships begin. But people cannot forget that this is not enough. They cannot make plans up to the wedding day. They have to make plans for after also the wedding day and understand that after the wedding day, they, they, they need to come together, they need to to understand each other, there must be sacrifice, there must be uh, um, you know, mutual understanding between the, between the two of them. And a desire to persist, because yeah. many people, at the sight of the first problem, mm -hmm. or the first serious problem, you know what, let's just call it quits. Yeah, and we, we, we'll hear in our next show, next week we're going to be back and hear how Alex and Leah turned that around. What did they have to do? What did they have to do to turn that around? Because it's easier said than done. So they will reveal to us what they have to do in order to turn that around and apply those those changes to, to their to their own to their relationship to their marriage. Okay? And that's it for today. We'd like to thank James and Leslie Kimber, the owners of the Cuden Beach Hotel, and also their staff, also a crew who's right now here with us, not enjoying this weather very much. But we'd like to thank all of them. And until next show, see you then. Bye bye. I had a lot of issues. But since the very beginning, we start to fight. She said, is it possible for you to love me? And then I said, I don't think so. And that's all for today's Love Talk show. Be sure to tune in next week to learn more on how to love intelligently. This program is brought to you by UCKG.